Hey everybody, Jill from Two Dogs Media. Want to introduce you to Key Search. I've not heard of it until recently and I actually really think it's a great tool. So I wanted to do a general overview video so you can see all the components of it. This is not meant to be a tutorial. It's just a walkthrough so you can understand what the tool offers um, to decide if it's a good investment for your um, company. So this is the pricing and this is one of the things that I really like. Um, and I do think it is a good investment for small websites and bloggers who may not have enough to warrant an AREFs or SEM Rush subscription. So I uh, just did a month um, of the starter package for, with 200 credits, and I'll show you in a few minutes how the credits are used. Uh, but it's $17 a month. You can get a pro uh, for 500 credits for 34 a month, or if you pay in advance for a year, you get the discount. So it's really a good deal. Um, so that is the pricing on it. So again, it's $17 a month for 200 credits and 34 for 500 credits. Good deal for smaller organizations that may not need a more robust tool. So when you go to key search, I already put in um, a term. Say you're a blogger and you wanted to do a post about hair dryers. You want to do a profile of the best hair dryers. Um, now, depending on the authority of your website, it's going to depend whether or not you even bother with this term. Right off the bat, I can see I wouldn't even bother with it. The competition is fairly difficult. This is not a term, even with you know, 14 years of SEO experience, I would bother with at this point. Um, You'd have to make a big investment to actually rank for this by trying to procure backlinks and getting authority for the page, and it's just not a term that's easy to rank for. So what you would do is you'd come to key, uh, key search, you would go to keyword research, you type in whatever term um, you're looking to optimize for. You want to keep it somewhat broad um, so that the tool can give you other ideas. And then you're going to choose whatever country you're in. And then they actually have some different options, related keywords, Bing, YouTube, Amazon. So if you're actually selling hair dryers, you might want to just put hair dryer and then click Amazon suggest and see what kind of results are returned from Amazon um, that you can optimize for. But for now, we're just going to do related keywords. I'm imagining that's where most of you guys are going to focus. And then when you click search, this is the screen that you get. So you can see up here, best hair dryer. It gives you an estimated volume of searches of about 33,000 a month, estimated cost per click, $1.15. Uh, competition is fairly difficult with a score of 55. Um, there is a deep analysis, we're not gonna cover that today, that'll fall under a tutorial. And then we have search trends, which this is kind of cool because it'll let you see um, if something is a seasonal search, if something's falling off and nobody's searching for it anymore. Um, it'll tell you if there's peaks and valleys and if it's being consistent. So for hair dryers, you can see um, it's pretty stable across the board. There's a bump in December, which means more people are searching for it in December, which to me would make me assume that it is uh, a great Christmas gift idea. Um, and then you can see the plummet here. This is obviously due to COVID. Uh, nobody's was buying anything in March and April. It's starting to come back up a little bit though. Um, so, you know, you have to remember to look for those anomalies. Up here, this is just showing you if the domain is available or not. So besthairdryer.com is probably not available. Besthairdryer.net probably is. You might not need this, but just so you know, it's there. This section is the competitors that are ranking for the term. So you can see the SERP analysis, it's showing you your top 10 competitors, and you can see good housekeeping, the cut, allure, you're not going to beat these guys. I, you would have to have a ton of authority. Um, so the, that's what I'm saying, this is a term I wouldn't even bother with. The domain authority is pretty high. If you're in the 80s and 90s, you're not beating these guys. Anything in red, pretty much stay away from. Um, and then I, I haven't really touched on any of this yet. Again, this all falls under the tutorials, but this will... Um, just give you an idea of if it's even possible for you to rank. And right off the bat, I can see just by looking at the domain authority, it's not. Rankings and traffic, it'll give you the keywords that rank for that specific URL. So if I click on this, I'll see the keywords that the Amazon page is ranking for. If I click on this, I'll see the 400 keywords that Good Housekeeping is ranking for. Um, it'll also give you an estimate of the traffic that specific page is um, getting. And again, these are estimates. They're not accurate by any stretch. If I went into their Google Analytics for this page, it would not say 28,000. It would be really much higher or much less. Um, so just a guide. It's not exact numbers. And then this is just a domain values. And then social, you can see Facebook, Pinterest shares, again, estimates, but probably pretty close. So you can see how popular something is on Facebook or Pinterest. And then below that, it's just giving you some keyword suggestions. 
maybe things you might want to put into your post related to this. Uh, best hair dryer under 100, best hair dryer under 50, best hair dryer 2020, just other options. Most of what you spend your time is going to be on this side. Um, you can see it's returning results for 700 keywords. I've found in using this um, and playing around with it that it does max out at 700, um, which is fine for most smaller bloggers who are just getting into this. Um, you know, and, and who just needs some kind of keyword research, that's fine. But if you're serious about it and you're a blogger that's had success, um, you know, and you're ready to get to that next level, I just wanted to show you if I type best hair dryer into SEM Rush under their keyword magic tool, it shows me 4,963 results. And if I look at AREFs for best hair dryer, it shows me 6,070 keywords. So there's a big difference there. Um, and that's one of my concerns is that you're not getting um, as much as you can in regards to related terms um, or other opportunities. So once you find a term um, you know, that you're kind of interested in, you can click the check button. The check button is what uses your credits. It's just one of the things, um, but it uses your credits. So you have to be careful with how you're using this. Um, but you can filter. So you can do negative words, number of words. So say if I wanted to do, because I'm looking at long tail keywords. Um, if I wanted to do five, number of words, five, and then f um, click filter. So that way it's giving me terms that I probably have better chances of ranking for. So right here I can see best hair dryer for curly hair. Now if I click on this, showing me the score is 36, which means it's pretty obtainable, still hard, but obtainable. Um, and you can see the DA, you can see now we have a few yellows in there. Um, maybe this one we might be able to beat depending where you are in your um, authority. Um, there's still some reds in there, but this might be one I might want to consider. Um, let's see if I can find one. Um, Blow dryer for curly hair, best hair dryer for thick hair. Let's check this one. And when I click check, you'll see this side changes for me. Okay, so best hair dryer for thick hair. It's telling me the score is 44, so it's actually a little bit harder than the last one. But here you've got this guy here, number 20. So you might want to look at this, you know, see, is this something you can beat? So this one actually gives me a little bit of hope. Maybe I can beat this one guy. Why are they there? Um, so this is kind of what you're going to do is just go through and get ideas for different terms. Um, so this is how you're going to use this tool. And then uh, there's a lot of different filters and when you do the check. So, I mean, you could filter by other things if you wanted to do volume. Um, I'm a fan for new um, bloggers to do volumes under 500. So I'm going to do number of words five with a volume of less than 500. And this should give me some more obtainable goals. So best hair dryer under $100. Let's see what this one gives me. 41, it's still difficult. This is a competitive niche, so this one will be kind of difficult. So this one's 34. There's a couple. So here are the beauty lab. Again, that's another one. It's kind of easy. Uh, but that's how you use this tool. Okay, and then you can save your keywords, you can compare keywords. Um, I didn't really get into that, that's more of a tutorial thing. Um, but this is the basics of what you want to do. So I would focus on the filter, number of words, and then the volume two um, will give you a good start. So you can also do a quick difficulty search um, where you can enter some keywords and I'll tell you right off the bat, like I have my little list here, I was playing around, and you can see all of my stuff is really difficult. Um, just a nice little list to keep you organized. Um, you could do brainstorming, which I kind of like this idea. So say if I wanted to fix one of my posts on my own site, I wanted to make it better. Meta descriptions, if I type it in and click search, it's going to give me Google ideas, meta descriptions, HTML, meta descriptions for product pages. I might want to add that to my post. Meta descriptions for blog posts, I might want to add that into my post. So it's just giving you some uh, visual guides to um, some additions. And they also have a difficulty browser add-on. I didn't use that. The Explorer section will give you an overview of a page. This is still in beta, um, so you can put any page or domain in here, uh, and you can choose a specific page or the entire domain to kind of see how authoritative they are. So if you want to look at one of your competitors, this is the way you can do it. Um, it's telling me this birdie has a pretty good domain strength, 5.8 out of 10. Um, there are com competition is fairly difficult. You're going to have a hard time beating them. Um, and then it's telling you the organic keywords that they rank for. So you can see all the keywords for this specific page 
These are all the keywords that they rank for. And then it's giving you the backlinks. The one thing I found, the backlinks are not at all accurate in this tool. Um, there's a lot more backlinks going on. Uh, for this page. I looked, checked it in AREFs. So I wouldn't get too hung up on the backlinks. They're not incredibly accurate. So competitive analysis. Okay. And it's the same thing. Backlink checker. It's showing me two backlinks. I, I think they had like 11. Um, these two weren't even in what I saw in AREFs. So the backlink is not that competitive. I wouldn't put too much faith in this. Um, organic keywords. Um, let's see. I'll just put in my own domain for now. So you can kind of see how this looks. Um, I'm going to do the entire domain. But you can do this for any of your competitors, and that's what's really cool about it. So you can see, um, so it's only going to show me a 1,000 entries. So there are limitations. Um, but you can see, you know, I'm ranking number one for this. I'm ranking number one for that, ranking number one for that. So this is a good way to kind of see where a competitor is in terms of their rankings. Um, or you can use a specific page if you're going up against a specific page. Okay, so we got that. Competitor gap. So you, what you can do is you enter your site and enter a, your competitor's site, and it'll give you the keywords that your competitor ranks for that you may not. So if you already have a page written and they have a page that's similar, you put those two pages in, and it's going to show you the keywords that um, you may be missing from your post that could be helping you. So it's a good tool for kind of making sure you're in line with some of your competitors. Um, URL metrics, it's just, again, another guide to kind of see page authority and domain authority. Uh, there's a lot of tools out there that do that. Um, and then page analyzer. So this one is kind of cool in that it tells you a lot just about this singular page. It does take a little bit to load. So here we've got just an overview of how this page is doing. So you can see a general website score 76.5. Again, guys, these are not like hardcore metrics. It's a tool. Um, even with the website auditing tools, I don't like those manual tools. They're never 100% accurate and it's not a SEO score. Um, SEO is more than anything a tool can give you data for. But what this is giving you is just a really good bird's eye view of what your competitor is doing well and what they're not. So their title tag is in good shape. They have meta properties going. Um, they're missing alt tags. They're missing iframes or they have an iframe. Um, so you can just kind of get a, a good insight into where they're doing well and where they're not and maybe grab some um, ways to steal the rank from them. Um, so definitely a, a cool tool for looking at your competitors. All right, YouTube research, I didn't dig too much into this um, unless you're on YouTube, but it's again the same thing where you can research who's doing well on YouTube, um, how difficult a term is on YouTube, all that. It's just specific to YouTube. And then we have the rank tracking se section. So I just put in a few just to kind of test it out. Um, you can see my volume hasn't changed. It does update daily. Um, this one went up one spot. So I have one up, one down. Um, you can do multiple domains. And it's just a great way to see where you are. So I definitely recommend doing this if you can. Um, it does a couple cool things where it'll show you where you are over a course of time. So like this one went up. So in my little graph, I can see it bounced up. And you can see I've been kind of up and down over the last couple of weeks. I jump up, I jump down. And it'll also show you who is ranking in the top 10. So I can see, you know, I got to beat these guys. Um, so I'm going to work on my page a little bit and see if I can move up even further. So these are all great tools. And so that's rank tracking. And then under more, more tools, they have two new, two things that are kind of cool. So I did play around with this the other day. Uh, I copied and pasted my meta description post in here. Um, and then what it did is it gave me all this great information. Now, if there's one thing you're going to spend time in this tool on, it would be this. This and your keyword research will be the two things that will help you the most. So meta description examples is my main keyword. You can see it's fairly difficult. It, if I had my content in here, it would give me a word count. And it tells me where the average word count is for the top 10 results. And we can see where I am in line with those top 10 competitors. So if I have 4,000 words and they only have 2,000, I might want to consider reducing my content. Um, if I'm at 1,000 and they're at 2,000, 
I might want to increase my content. So you want to be in line with what your top 10 competitors are doing. And that's what this tool is about, helping you do that. Um, recommended keywords, it gives you a list of the recommended keywords. It gives you a list of the must use keywords. These are the keywords that all of your competitors are using and ranking for with. So if I don't have SEO meta in my post, it's going to tell me it's going to stay orange. It's going to say you need to put SEO meta in here and watch what happens if I put SEO meta. Okay. It turns blue so that I know I've used it. So this is a really good way to optimize your post based on what the top competitors are doing. It's going to give you related keywords. And again, same thing. If I put in meta description tag, you can see it turn blue. Okay, and then this one turned blue because meta description's in there also. So it's just going to help me make sure I'm using all the keywords that are being recommended for me. Gives you research. Um, it, it gives you snippets from existing top pages so that you can have some inspiration for your content. You can look at some questions that you can add to your post. What is a meta description example? What is a meta description? There's lots of great stuff in here. Um, and then it'll tell you the SERPs. Okay. So this is the top 10 pages on the SERPs. I can click and easily click through and view the page. Um, I can export all the data. Uh, guys, this is like the game changer thing. So I highly recommend using this tool even just for this. It'll just really help you optimize your post based on what those top pages are using. And then last, they have Opportunity Finder, um, which is a newer tool and I think still beta, but this is really cool. So say if I had a, my post about meta description examples, okay, say I want to look for forums. It gives you three options. You can try and find who's doing guest, where I can find guest post opportunities, where I can find forums where this is being talked about, and where I can find blogs where this is being talked about. So if I click forums and click search, okay, you can see um, there's some forums going on and maybe I can see about leaving a comment or um, leaving a link. So I, I would just kind of scroll through this and see if there's anything related. Um, I can do blogs. Okay, no devel nothing available at this time and I can click guest posts. Okay, so this one will show me guest post opportunities that are relevant to what I put in. Um, so this is my event organizer. I would go through, take a quick look at the site, see if there's a way I can write. Um, if there are event organizers that have their own websites, doing a meta description article for them might be helpful so that they can optimize their own sites. So this is just a really great way to potentially and easily find guest posting opportunities. So this is keyword research in, or key search in a nutshell. Um, I would love to know what you think. Is it something you use? Do you like it? And hopefully I'll have a tutorial or two coming up soon uh, to go over the keyword research and competitor analysis um, a little more in depth. Thanks guys and have a great day.